Hi, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. A couple of months ago I bought something called a Tinkerboard. And to be honest with you, despite I think it's now three months worth of effort, I can't get the darn thing to run for more than a day or two, and sometimes not at all. Um, so at this point I don't recommend you buy one. Having said that, I'm going to make a last effort to get the thing to work. Just to sort of go over what I've what I've used, uh, I've used four different monitors, uh, four different SD cards, multiple uh, USB cables with uh, micro on one side and the standard on the other to power the thing, uh, four power supplies all rated at two to two and a half amps at five volts, um, different HDMI cables, uh, different settings on the monitor, um, pretty much have tried everything I could think of to, to make it work and up till now it hasn't. Um, it's had a number of issues um, including I've got it mounted because I'm this is what my last ditch effort is um, kind of getting ahead of myself, but we'll get to this in a minute. This is the uh, ticker board, and I've mounted it on a on a power supply. Um, here's my thinking, and I haven't tested it yet, so we'll we'll see how it goes in just a few minutes. Um, it, so I I'm suspecting, despite the four power supplies and all of them rated at more current than the thing is drawing, that. Perhaps uh, it was hearing noise. Um, maybe there's some issue with the uh, uh, USB port that's on it. What I've done was to get a power supply from um, an old computer. Now this has um, a uh, 5 volts at uh, 16 amps. Plenty to power it. And I'm going to go through how I've converted this um, computer power supply from a uh, master cooler uh, into basically a desktop or bench power supply. So the, the point of this episode is how do you make a, uh, a computer power supply into something that you can use in your ham radio station? Also, is it something that can be used to power the um, uh, tinkerboard? So I, I pushed it off to one side. I plan to mount other stuff on here. Is this the way I'm going to use it forever? No, it's mostly to see if I can get the darn thing to run. I've become so frustrated with it, I didn't call it Tinkerboard. I gave it a much more distinctive name. Um, the uh, HDMI in and out, uh, despite the times when it, in, even at the times when the thing would run, uh, they didn't function. I bought a uh, Raspberry Pi camera, that doesn't function. Uh, this heat sink that's on here um, is a little piece of double sticky tape it frequently comes off so to try to resolve that problem I mounted a little blower on this end connected it to 5 volt, 12 volts that's going to blow across hopefully uh, the heat sink and keep, keep the thing cool the uh, processor that's on here runs really hot I haven't put a thermometer on it but it's way the heck up there and that may be part of what's going on I don't know it may be uh, shutting down thermally um, Ticker board has uh, four USB in, uh, Cat5, uh, HDMI out, uh, ribbon HDMI in and out, and a, um, uh, an eighth inch jack that can be either audio in or audio out, if I, if I understand it correctly, and then the micro SD. All right, let's run the video. I'll show you how I converted this thing. Uh, it's interesting wiring on the inside, as it turns out. And then at the end of that, we'll come back and power this thing up and see what happens. All right, let's uh, watch a few minutes of video on making a power supply or making a uh, power supply. Okay, so it says um, 276 watts at 12 volts, which would be 23 amps. So that would power supply, that would supply power to most transceivers. This, there's a green uh, wire that's on this multi pin connector, not that one but that one that um, when taken to ground 
turns the power supply on. So it's like the front panel switch grounds that green wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo it from the bundle and I'll just take it to ground leave it permanently on. Uh, the switch that's on the outside of the cabinet will work. So if you have one that doesn't have a switch, use that green wire. Just take it to ground through the switch. Okay, now comes the, the surprise. Let's see what's on the inside. Uh, looks like there's just four screws on what amounts to the um, the bottom of the power supply. And I'm curious about this gaggle wires because you know what do they all go to? A terminal strip or what's on the inside? And doesn't look like the fan can be unhooked or unplugged. <coughs> All right. Um, it, it almost appears that they all go to the same spot on the circuit board, so uh, I'm really curious about what that looks like. So maybe this would be time to pull the circuit board out and see where all those wires go. Are they are they all you know are they all connected together? Are they are there separate runs, separate power supplies, separate capacitors? I at this point I don't know. I do know there's too much wiring, so best for me just to get a bunch of it out of the way. Um, there are three colors I'm looking for. There's orange, yellow, and well actually four. Orange, yellow, red, and black. There's a 3.3 uh, regulated supply. I don't think I have a use for that so I'm just going to ignore it. Uh, there's 12 volts regulated and 5 volts regulated and then a ground. So those are the ones I'm going to go for. The question is do I need all those wires? And at this point um, in looking at the wires, they look like number 20, which on a good day, short run, is probably good for 4 or 5 amps. So in theory, for 23 amps, I'd need maybe 5 wires. I think I'll increase that a bit because the wires they appear to be labeled number 20 AWG. I have in the past found some that were not what they were spec'd out to be. So let's cut these things out of the way, get them to a length that's manageable, and um, I think then I'll lift that power supply out. It it looks like there's at least four screws that hold it in place, maybe maybe one in the middle. And the darn fan does not unplug, so I may end up cutting it out of the way because it's just going to be in the way the whole time. Um, in cutting these right now, I'm, I'm making them about a foot long, so. In, in the end, they're probably going to be just a few inches long. The orange are the 3.3 volts, which I, I don't need. The yellow is 12 volts, and the red is the one I'm really going for right now, and that's the 5 volt. And black is ground, and the that'll be the easiest to deal with because I can take that bundle to ground. Uh, Likely the circuit board is also grounded, so the, the black wires may be redundant, but for noise, I'm going to ground them. Okay, so I've got red, yellow, orange, black, and a green wire tucked in a bundle that find out. And look at that. They pretty much just solder together. That trace has handled a lot of current. 23 amps worth. Surprises me. Well, 12 anyway. OK, 
Okay, time to start cutting wires. Um, I'm going to mount terminals through the holes that are the ventilation holes. I can probably line three of those up in a row, in a row and make it look halfway decent. The um, I'll use. I happen to have a green one, which will be. I think I'll make that 12 volts. A black one, which will be ground, and a red one, which will be the 5 volts. And I think I'm going to. I'm not going to use all the wires because there's no point to it. Um, pick a number six, seven, eight. I, I might just do eight and bundle them together. I think what I'll do is I'll put them into a pigtail, um, connect like a number 12 wire to the opposite, to the pigtail. So the, the bundle of 8 will connect to um, a really good cable that I have, a really good wire that I have. It's actually a cable. And I'll do just some big glob of uh, I'll do some big uh, wrap with all the wires. Now, I don't need all these ground, they're just away, so I'm going to cut a bunch of them out of the way. And I'll cut them shorter when I get in there. Um, I don't have the right cutters with me. And this is the 12 volt one, so I'll grab about eight of those. Cut away the rest because they're not needed. And again, I'll um, cut those to a manageable length and strip the ends, bundle them together, wrap them with some number 12, um, and make like a, a pigtail out of it. I'll put some heat shrink over the, the solder connection because it's going to be messy no matter what I do. I've got some alpha wire number 12 AWG, which is a really good uh, high volt, uh, high temperature uh, cable that'll handle uh, the current with no uh, 23 amps. It'll it'll handle it fine. Okay, I've got them bundled together. Um, not a pretty soldering job, so I'm going to hide it with some heat shrink. In fact, I'm going to do it with two layers of heat shrink. I'm concerned that uh, a wire might poke through an individual strand, so. Um, See what I'm doing here. So again, there's two layers. The outer heat shrink is the kind with a glue on the inside, and it's really thick. So there's there's no way a wire is gonna or a strand is gonna poke through that. All right, I've got them bundled together. I've wrapped them with nylon uh, straps, wire ties kind of push them out of the way because I've got to keep clearance for that that fan and so I'm going to tuck them underneath a small circuit board try to route them in a way where they're not going to make contact with anything and they're not going to be touching the heat the uh, heat sink in the power supply or the blades of the fan I did also when I had the circuit board out drill four holes to mount the, the tinker board not a great job of drilling holes but anyway it'll be good enough for this I'm going to make sure I've got clearance for this fan that um, it will spin. And you can see I've mounted the, uh, the three terminals that were just, um, they're insulated from the chassis so they're poked through a hole and I just enlarged one of the vent holes, or three of the vent holes and pushed them through. Okay, I have just now put uh, into the GPIO um, pins 5 volts on two connectors, uh, ground on one, uh, plugged in an HDMI cable that I, that I know is good into a monitor that I, I know works on HDMI. Um, I've used Win32 to upload the latest version of the Tinker OS operating system. Turned it on and it worked. Um, I'll, 
I'll let you know after several hours whether or not it continues to work, and maybe I'll put a comment. That appears to be the... I've got a receiver going in here in the background. That appears to be the problem that I was having. It may have been that the power supplies I was using or the way I was connecting it uh, to the tinker board just won't work. So I'm into three pins, two uh, are red, one is I think black. Uh, red ones are the positive of course, black is the ground. And it seems to be working okay. Also the little blower that blows across the top of the heat sink seems to be doing a job. Uh, just a quick test of it. The heat sink is much cooler than it was before. Anyway, that's a video on basically on how to convert a computer power supply into a bench power supply. See you the next time. I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Base. I'm Jim, w <laughs> I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Thanks for watching. See you the next time. Oh, and please subscribe. Thanks.